The Douglas XB-19, also known as the Guardian of the Hemisphere, was the largest and heaviest bomber ever built by the United States Army Air Forces until 1946, when it was surpassed by the Hughes H-4 Hercules, the Spruce Goose, and the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. Conceived in the 1930s, the Douglas XB-19 was meant to be the most innovative and powerful aircraft of its time, and a joint secret project between the U.S. Army and the Douglas Aircraft Company. The XB-19 was a four-engine bomber with long-range capabilities that could fly continuously for over 24 hours due to its impressive 11,000-gallon fuel capacity. It would be manned by an 18-man crew, and it included bunks, seats, and even a galley kitchen. Equipped with two 37mm cannons, five 50 and six 30 caliber machine guns, the XB-19 surpassed the firepower of any other U.S. warplane built until then. But the development of the colossal 132-foot aircraft dragged on for three years, and as World War II quickly approached, so did technological advances. Time was running against it, and the possibility of giving the Guardian of the Hemisphere a different use was latent. No one wanted to give up on one of America's earliest superweapons. Tensions rise in Europe. World War I witnessed the rise of armored vehicles and aircraft as the next natural step towards the evolution of warfare. Before that, Europe had been waging battles with military tactics and technology that had slowly evolved since the 19th century. But the war dramatically changed military ideologies. The world's superpowers were now obsessed with the idea of developing bigger aircraft that overshadowed the rudimentary biplane to the four-year conflict. Still, veteran aviators argued that air warfare was all about mobility, speed, maneuvering, and dogfighting, not only size. The United States Army Air Corps became deeply interested in all sorts of experimental prototypes that could push technology further. But as the Great Depression struck the country, resources were allocated to military areas most in need. Rumors eventually circulated about the discreet rearmament of Germany, and U.S. officials immediately took notice. American aircraft were not advanced enough in case of a future conflict. With tensions rising in Europe, and the aggressive Japanese expansion in Asia threatening American territories, the U.S. Army accelerated the development of new aircraft. Consequently, the U.S. Army Air Corps envisioned the largest and most heavily armed aircraft American engineers had ever built. The aircraft would also be capable of performing continental flights, taking off from the U.S. to defend its territories in South Asia or support its allies in the Atlantic. By February of 1935, the secret project began to take form, and the U.S. Army started to search for aircraft manufacturers that could be up to the task. Secret Project D Codenamed Project D, the top secret initiative had the objective of building a large, elegant, and efficient long-range bomber for the U.S. Air Corps. The Douglas and Sikorsky Aircraft Company showed interest and were pitched against each other for a chance to build the most advanced long-range bomber ever produced by the U.S. Sikorsky's prototype received the designation XBLR-3, while Douglas's model was codenamed XBLR-2. The letters XBLR stood for Experimental Bomber Long Range. In July of 1935, both companies were asked to build a full-scale mock-up of their design. Eight months later, they were ready to showcase their prototypes to the Army. After thorough analysis, the Army Air Corps decided the Douglas proposal was superior, given its potential performance and technological innovations. Subsequently, Douglas was awarded a contract to develop the long-range bomber in April of 1936. The XBLR-2 had a unique design. It was conceived as a massive, four-engine, low-wing monoplane. Its concept was still very much rooted in the 1930s, with an entire airframe covered in a smooth, unfinished silver metal skin that shone vividly when displayed during daylight hours. The fuselage had a low-winged, teardrop-shaped design that tapered at the rear. It featured a pronounced deep belly for the internal bomb bay and additional cargo. The nose section was heavily glazed and had a stepped cockpit flight deck. The unusual glazing was intended to enhance forward visibility, particularly underneath the massive plane. Each wing was mid-mounted and attached slightly forward of midship. Four propellers, each 17 feet in diameter, were mounted along the leading edges. Compared to the later B-29 Superfortress, the aircraft was nearly 50% larger in pure size. The wings had a traditional straight design rounded at the tips. The tail unit was composed of one curved vertical tail fin with round horizontal planes. The entire aircraft rested on a retractable tricycle landing gear that ditched the standard tail dagger design that other aircraft of the era used. Its tires were massive and a sight to behold. The aircraft would be powered by four 1600 horsepower XB3421 24-cylinder liquid-cooled engines. 
these experimental motors were basically two 12-cylinder Allison inline V engines paired together. By November of 1936, Douglas decided on a crucial change in design. Although the powerful but compact Allison XV3421 engine showed promise during development, the design was too complex and Allison was too busy with the V1710 that would power the P38 Lightning and P51 Mustang. Instead, Douglas chose the 2000 horsepower Wright R3350. During the early days of 1937, the bomber's designation was changed to B-19 to join the ranks of the Army's bomber series. Later in the year, Douglas's research and development agreement was upgraded to a production contract. Still, the Douglas Aircraft Company was not receiving any funds. From the original $1.5 million the Army had considered to develop the aircraft, Douglas had to invest more than twice from its own pocket to keep the project afloat. Then the Great Depression hit, and the construction of the B-19 slowed down considerably. By 1938, Douglas estimated the bomber would weigh more than 130,000 pounds if they continued at their current pace. The wingspan was expected to measure an unprecedented 212 feet, with a projected 132-foot length and a 42-foot height. Fulfilling the Army's request to keep the B-19 up in the air for over 24 hours, Douglas made the necessary accommodations to increase fuel capacity to up to 11,000 gallons. The 18-man crew required to operate the aircraft would need to eat and rest. To keep them in fighting shape, Douglas equipped the B-19 with bunks, seats, and even a galley kitchen. When Germany invaded Poland in 1939, Europe began to prepare for war. The B-19 was still in production, and technological advances were catching up, rendering it obsolete. The Army then declassified the project and lost interest in the massive bomber that kept dragging on. Douglas requested the Army to relinquish the contract, but they refused. The prototype had to be finished. The Guardian and the Hemisphere by 1941, the project became common knowledge, and other countries started to emulate its design ideas. But when the media found out, the spotlight gave the B-19 renewed interest, and the public regarded it as a superweapon. The B-19's impressive size, and its capability to perform intercontinental flying, attracted so much attention that it garnered the nickname the Guardian of the Hemisphere. In May of 1941, the B-19 prototype was finally finished. Expectations were so high that President Roosevelt personally called Douglas to congratulate them on the achievement. The first flights took place in June of 1941. The B-19 performed satisfactorily in the skies, and it was truly capable of flying at 170 miles per hour for 24 hours. When the attack on Pearl Harbor occurred in December of 1941, the B-19 was painted in camouflage tones and loaded with a powerful arsenal for imminent combat. Defensive armament consisted of two 37mm cannons, five 50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns, and six 30 caliber M1919 Browning machine guns. The weaponry was strategically distributed along the fuselage to protect the aircraft from all sides. Although the B-19 did not show any apparent problems, the U.S. Army Air Force had decided to convert it into a cargo aircraft because the massive bombing raids with the B-17s, B-25s, and other modern aircraft had proven more effective than using just one colossal warplane. Therefore, the B-19 never saw combat, and was only used throughout the war to carry valuable cargo from one place to another. Ultimately, the B-19 was too expensive and slow to build compared to other bombers, while also being incompatible with the huge bomber formations that devastated Germany. When the war ended, the B-19 was decommissioned and scrapped for parts. Only its two immense landing gear tires survived. One is located at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, and the other is on display at the Hill Aerospace Museum in Roy, Utah. The B-19 has gone down in American aviation history as one of the largest aircraft ever produced alongside the Hughes H-4 Hercules, the Spruce Goose, and the Condor B-36 Peacemaker. Although the Guardian of the Hemisphere never saw actual combat, its design later inspired the B-29 Superfortress, which dropped the atomic bombs on top of Japan in 1945 and became one of the most successful bomber aircraft of all time. Please like, comment, and subscribe to watch more content related to legendary aircraft. And tell us in the comments below what other aircraft you'd like us to cover.